Well, I'm Robert Merton. I am uh, the School of Management Distinguished Professor of Finance at MIT. I'm the John Natty MacArthur University Professor Emeritus of Harvard. I am resident scientist at Dimensional Fund Advisors. And those are my three professional connections. Well, first let me be say that while well, I've followed Mexico and I come here, I don't spend all my time here. And so I will not go into the kind of detail of knowledge which I don't have, I mean, of detail. But I think I understand some of the important issues. Like everywhere in the world, there's a pension, I hate to call it a crisis, but certainly a challenge of funding. Some of that comes from the fact that we have a much faster aging population in most countries. But some of it comes from the very good news that people are going to live longer, are living longer and will live longer. That's great news. But if people are living longer, somehow we're going to have to figure out, they're going to have to figure out how to take care of themselves longer. And we have to solve that problem. So that's a generic problem. It's a big problem. But it's, I would say this, that everywhere, it's, a, it's not a science problem, it's an engineering problem. We know how to do it. It's not, gee, we don't know how to do it. That's a science problem. We know how to do it. It's complicated, complicated to execute economically or financially complicated, politically and complicated for sociological reasons. But these are all surmountable. So I just want to be very clear that it's a big challenge, but it's one that can be solved. Mexico has introduced, is introducing two big, this made two big changes or implementations in, in the system for its, the defined contribution part of its pension system. Number one, it's going to show people, everybody in the plans, in all these plans, instead of just seeing what the value of their plan is, so many pesos, you know, 400,000 pesos or whatever, um, they will see what amount of income in retirement they could buy with what they have in their account when they look at it. You understand? So instead of seeing my account is worth 2 million pesos, it will say uh, you have enough to buy, I don't know, 100,000 pesos of income in retirement so you know what you have what you care about for retirement is your standard of living standard of living is by income therefore instantly if i if you're living on 50 and you say it's 30 is the amount you have you can think about it and say it's going to be tough to live on 30. you know where you are and you know that i either need more if i want to live like that i am or i'm going to have to do it no one had to teach you that, okay? As it is now, if I show you you have two million pesos, you have no idea. Even if you're highly educated, even if you have PhD, you have no idea how much income that means in retirement. Therefore, you don't know how you are. So this provision, which I believe Mexico is the first country to bring in as a regulatory requirement, is incredibly important for the success, the long run success of the pension system. And frankly, you know, if you put it in here as I, you are, I hope to use Mexico as a case study around the world to say they did it. And here's why you can see how they're doing. And I look forward to watching your progress. So that's a very important element. And while it may have to take some time with a transition, I don't think the transition is going to be very difficult because you, know, you often, we, we were discussing earlier, education. Um, People understand income in terms of what it means much better than they do wealth. So you're actually making it simpler for them to understand their pension plan instead of saying they have to go and get educated. So this is a step in every way in the right direction. The other part that's been implemented are target date funds. And target date funds are kind of best practice or state of current practice 
for many DC plants, including in the United States. Uh, they're an improvement over what was done before. Uh, they do simplify decisions for people, and that's what you want. You don't want to make complications for people, you want to simplify it. But there's more that needs to be done. They have flaws with them that are, you know, it's not a finished story. It's, it's on a good way, but it's not a efficient story. So in summary, these two things are, I think, important steps for the Mexican pretension system. Uh, where funding is for the rest of it, I think that's public knowledge. Uh, and you'll have to deal with whatever that is. And you'll also have to be able to separate an efficient running system for people contributing to a separate issue, but connected, which is if people do not have enough resources, people who are poor or, and you have to figure out how to deal with that. But you can do that in the pension system by putting money in for people, but it, it's a different, different issue. Important issue, but different. Okay, well, to be more precise, yes, target funds, what I've contributed to more generally is the idea of building pension systems that take the contributions, manage them, sometimes for each individual, individual account, and takes in information about the individual, they're changing personal concern, and changing market condition, and then adjust the portfolio, and set, help set goals for that. So basically, it manages, it sets goals and manages uh, the whole process for retirement, individually for every person. Uh, target day funds are a compromise. They are more pooled, they're not specific to an individual account, uh, and they don't have goals. And so. They're a piece of it, but the target date features are, one, what do they do? Uh, they look at, they, they decide how much of your contributions should be in risky assets at risk and how much should be in a safe asset. Ideally, they want to have the best performing risky asset they can, the most reward for return, but it's risky and risk-free, and they all have the feature, target day funds, that as you get closer to your retirement date, they increase the amount in the safe asset and reduce the amount of risk with the idea that as people get closer to retirement, you should be reducing their risks and their reasons for doing that. So what it tries to do is build in a dynamic system of adjusting your portfolio without you, the individual, having to do anything, okay? And it does it at pretty low cost. So it's designed to, the fees are very low and it can be done pretty efficiently. So it is trying as a simplified result to produce more optimal, more tailored portfolios for people as a function of, in this case, age. There are next generation developments of this and I, that do more than that. They take account other things about you to more tailor it to you. It's still not a single account, but it's much closer to tailoring. It's like a suit you're wearing. If you have one size suit for everybody, that's the extreme. Everybody, there's no chain. The other is that you may have it a few sizes small, medium, large. Well, that gives you some choice. And then some that have size nine, size 10, size 12, and that's more, but still. And then of course the ultimate is a tailored suit to your exact body. And that's the parallel of what we can do. We can do today, it's technically feasible to do today, to have individual accounts for every single person. That's possible. And I've done it.
I mean, so well, I'm not saying that look at me, I mean, that it's doable. Uh, it's not where we are in general, but we can get there. And with FinTech, uh, you know, all the new technology, the costs coming down to do this are going to be great. I have very little doubt that pension systems like the one we have in Mexico here, where people are putting their money in, so it's okay, that they'll be the equivalent of individual accounts for everyone. And that, that's where we're going to go eventually. Now it's very fundamental. Look, we have developed in finance, the science of finance, enormous uh, amount of knowledge, sophisticated tools. In the finance practice, we have markets, many, many more markets than we used to. We don't just have a stock market and a bond market. We have futures markets, options markets, which are insurance markets. We have incredible number of markets which allow us to tailor and control risks much better, to extract information from the markets that gives us more knowledge, to do things at much lower cost. However, and the reason you can do that because these markets, they're sometimes called derivative markets, are very efficient at transferring risk. They do it very, very well. And they're used by central banks, they're used by everybody, okay. But precisely because they're so efficient, they're very powerful. Something that's very powerful needs to be managed by someone who knows what they're doing. If you give something very powerful to someone who's not well trained, that's dangerous because they don't know how to use it properly. Okay? So, like everything else, the design of airplanes is much more complex and sophisticated today than it was 50 years ago, just so here. The need for much higher trained people, more people in finance, not fewer, much better trained, understanding risk, understanding how these markets work and why they are there, what they can do and importantly what they can't do, and understanding the characteristics of them. We can, we can improve societies materially, our society, Mexico, United States, the rest of the world, we can improve them with these tools. But to safely implement these innovations and these markets, to use them most effectively, safely, you have to have highly educated, highly trained people. The knowledge it takes to use these things, design these things, like every other part of technology, it's much higher than it was. And so it's essential that we have much higher degree or level of training, much higher requirements of people who are going to be in those positions. And for sure, when we have FinTech and all the technology, which are robots or whatever, then it's even more important that the people who are engaged with that, working with robots or working with the technology, understand it better than anyone because technology is wonderful but it is also in some ways very dumb. It, mathematics, you tell it a model, it, it does what you tell it. If you say it's a one period model, it says okay I take that as truth and it's solved for one period and if the world isn't one period it's giving you a brilliant answer to the wrong questions and therefore we always are going to need people engaged, no matter how much technology we have. And But the people that you have have to be very well trained. And they have to be very well trained in finance. Uh, and so I, I can't speak more strongly about the need to get more people trained. And as the technology, these markets and the ability to do remarkable things, with risk management and so forth, is that permeates out into the rest of the world, 
you're going to need more and more people trained. You know, if you're going to bring some of the modern technology we use into some countries, into their markets, which they haven't done, we can bring the technology there, we can bring the market there, but if you don't have the people trained to oversee it, manage it, and implement it, it's not going to happen or it's going to be very dangerous. You see? So the, the growth opportunities as we spread this technology around the world, as we have been for many, many decades, uh, in my view, are just going to go up. And the skill sets needed are going to be much greater than they are now. Thank you so much. Well, you're very welcome. It was a privilege to see you. Okay, well, my great pleasure. Thank you.